Good morning. Bill Hurtado with TransWest Truck Trailer RV. Got a good one for you today. This is a 2020 Thor Magnitude SV34. Coincidentally, the SV34 is hands down their most popular floor plan uh, for a lot of reasons, and I'm going to show you why once we go through this thing. So let's talk a little bit about the chassis right here. This is on the Ford F550 platform, and it is four-wheel drive, has the 6.7 liter power stroke, which is rated for 330 horsepower and 750 pound-feet of torque. So this thing really, I gotta tell you, I absolutely love the F550, the F600. These are magnificent chassis to drive. It supports this motorhome really, really well. By my calculations, we've got about 2,300 pounds of carrying capacity over its base weight right now. That is 17.3, the way it sets, curb weight. So another 22 to 2,300 pounds over that for gear. Uh, you're not going to exceed that unless you're maybe a cement contractor or something. But just be aware there's lots of room here for extra stuff to take with you. So let's talk about Thor, some of the things that Thor has done on here. Thor is very innovative. They're the ones that came out with this one-piece overhead fiberglass cap up here. It's seamless, so the intention is not to have leaks, not to have moldings that are gonna build up moisture in there, uh, avoiding wood rot, that kind of thing. We've seen that forever on RVs, you know, since I've been in the business way back in the 70s. That's been a chronic problem with Class Cs. Uh, it's not applicable here. That one-piece fiberglass front cap is wonderful on this thing. So moving back here, um, I wanna grab my notes just so I can give you some of the specs on this thing. Um, this unit is 35 foot six inches long. It is 12 foot six inches high. 65 gallons of fresh water capacity, 40 gallon black and gray, uh, 16 gallon propane tank, and this great 20 foot awning. Really nice long awning, gives you a huge patio space on this one. Speaking of the awning, you'll notice that this is what we would call an armless awning. It doesn't have the arms coming down the sides right here. So FYI, you know I like to throw in my two cents on a lot of stuff for you people that don't know. This awning has the integrated arms built in at the top up there. When you see that, then you know that this thing, not only is it self-supportive, but it has a mercury switch in it, which I've coined the phrase ripple sensor. That's not official, that's me. But when that thing moves a certain amount of time for a few seconds, it will automatically retract itself and put itself away. You're away from the unit, that gust of wind comes along, it starts building up, you're not here to save it, it saves itself. So nice feature on the awning right there. Some of the things I'm gonna talk about on this unit are standard equipment, but more importantly, I want to tell you about what the previous owner did to this thing. Some upgrades on this that are really nice. We can talk about one of them right here. So inside this compartment, you'll see that yellow inverter. Beyond that, you see a gray inverter. The gray inverter is a standard issue from Thor. It's an 1800 watt. But the previous owner had this second inverter installed in here, 3000 watt. That is a really, really nice feature. The reason the previous owner did that is because they wanted to be able to power up the air conditioning on the roof without starting the generator. So essentially having this 3000 watt inverter right here, when you're traveling down the road, your alternator is providing plenty of power to keep the house batteries topped off. The house batteries are going through the inverter, hence to the roof air conditioning, which at 3000 watts, you can select one or the other. You just can't run them both at the same time. 
and that's okay. That ducted air will still cool the entire cabin. But, it's, but you're traveling down the road with this thing, you're running the inverter that they added onto this, which the 1800 watt cannot run the ACs. Keep that in mind, this can. You're essentially cooling the entire cabin for free. There's no cost to you whatsoever. The alternator's providing it to the batteries, batteries to the inverter, inverter to the air conditioning. So free cooling as you're traveling down the road. Excellent feature. I really like the fact that they did that. It, in my opinion, is a huge upgrade. So originally that 1800 watt inverter that comes standard on this, it will power up things such as the television outside, the television inside, the refrigerator, which is a residential style refrigerator. It powers that up. And this particular model has an outdoor refrigerator also. So lots of refrigerator space on this thing. But this is what we call the outdoor kitchen. And that has made the SV34 probably the most popular floor plan in Thor's history of magnitude. So having your outdoor refrigerator, some space for your favorite libation, if you will, hot and cold running water outside. Uh, this sink will eventually kind of fill up here. And then if you listen, I'm sure you heard that. That's a pump directly from here down to the gray tank. So uh, it doesn't have to require gravity to get down to that gray tank right here. Pumps it out for you. I might mention that this also comes standard with the uh, aluminum Alcoa wheels on there and they have that special finish on it. In my mind, I kept thinking I wanted to say it's Bright Tech, but that's not the exact word for that. There's something else on, on Alcoa that escapes me right now. But nonetheless, the idea here is that those are gonna be bright and shiny for life. Unlike the older versions of the Alcoas where they constantly had to be polished and, and shined up, they would succumb to road salt and mag chloride and other things uh, and get dull very fast. Not the case here. So nice feature on that. Right out here next to your outdoor kitchen is a great place for propane accessories, be it a, you know, one of those big heaters like we have in our backyard or a barbecue outside here. Uh, that's really a nice setup. They even make an oven now that is just incredible. Uh, we sell them here, so something to consider. Sitting out here, you may have that picnic table or fold-up table close by. You can put those accessories over here right next to your outdoor kitchen. Nice planning. Storage is very good on this. Uh, I believe it's 73 cubic feet of exterior storage. So for example, this compartment right here, you can see all the way across. So if you have some long items, you can get those in there. These are called rotocast. And that rotocast by definition means one piece molded. That'll support 400 pounds in any of the rotocast compartments around here. So nice feature. As I mentioned, 65 gallons of fresh water storage on board. Okay, towing. I'm not gonna get into the nuts and bolts of towing on this just yet. I wanna save it for the end. At the end of this video, I wanna sit down and I wanna show you some numbers that I put together. Super C's are the place that people go or tend to go because they wanna tow extensive amounts. Now this comes with a 10,000 pound hitch on it right now. But at the end of this video, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the upgradability here. Super C's are just known for being able to tow a lot more. And I will explain why as we get to the end here. In this model, the SV34, it's only one slide, but it's what we call a full wall slide. So the entire side, except for maybe the last few inches here, moves out. So you expand the entire space, bedroom to living room, galley, everything, 
moves out inside. So it's, it's a really nice setup there. Because it's a galley slide, it's not going to be more than 18 inches in depth. That's true across the board on all RVs, towables, motorhomes, doesn't matter. All right, so we know we have 50 amp service right here. And that's a detachable cord, comes off over here. We also have our cable TV slash satellite set up right here. So if you wanted to put a dish outside or if you're at a campground where they have cable TV available to you, that's where that connects. Your water, of course, back here where your electric is when you're hooking up at the campground. So city water, I know you know this, I'm a bit redundant sometimes, bear with me. But when you're hooked up to city water, you're pressurizing the system so you don't have to use your onboard water with the pump. Okay, that pressurizes everything and you just go on from there. Over here is where our fuel tank, our rear fuel tank uh, hatch is. This has two fuel tanks on it, a 40 and a 28. So you can transfer fuel from one to the other uh, up in the front, and they do that because the generator is designated to the front tank over here. So you're not running too, so fast out of the rear tank right there. And if you're out somewhere and you need to transfer from the front or from the back to the front, you can certainly do so very easily. This is your utility station. That's, again, a, a term that I made up. Um, some people call it the wet bay but very simple system on here. You've got your two holding tanks up above, and then they come to one termination point down below. The intention here is to have that sewer hose come in from the bottom, and then the head of this will swivel down so you have straight flow down. You've got your hose coming out from the bottom. You can keep your door closed. Aesthetically, everything looks nice. You've also got hot and cold running water outside on a shower, and you have a black tank flush out. Again, I know I'm a bit redundant, especially for those of you that watch my videos regularly, but let me just mention, I love having a black tank flush out because today, uh, most of our high-end sewer hoses have a short section of clear on them. You can actually see not only when that fluid is done draining, but the condition of that fluid. So when you're hooked up to your black water flush here and you've got your hose going through, you can take and look down at that uh, clear section. And once the fluid starts coming through clear, you know you're completely sanitized in your black tank. So very nice. That's, I'm glad the industry finally got up to that. You know, maybe it was several years ago, five, six, seven years ago, I'm not sure, but Nonetheless, it's good that they did that. So I mentioned generator. This has the 6,000 watt quiet diesel. As many of you know that quiet diesel comes in various sizes. In the big class A's over there, uh, they used to start at 7,500 and most of them go up to around 12.5, I think is the biggest one that we carry. QD, quiet diesel, that's a, that is such an accurate description, the way they modeled this unit. Not only because it's encased, but that diesel runs at a lower RPM, has secondary resonation on the exhaust, it's extremely smooth, it's one of the most wonderful things that have happened to the RV industry, the diesel generator. Absolutely love it. Sometimes you may have to you may have to turn the TV down a little bit so you can, is the generator running? So, yep, that's the way to know. Okay, again, just a small compartment right here. Talked about the Rotocast, 400 pound capacity. Not all of these go fully side to side. There are two of them that are just partially or most of the way across. And the rear one, like we looked at, is fully across. This does have the side camera package integrated in with the turn signals. So that'll show up on your screen on the dash as you change lanes. I've even used this 
maybe when I'm pulling in somewhere that's kind of tight, can't quite see with my mirror, make sure I don't run over something or bump into something, I'll use the turn signal and look at the screen and I can drive right around it that way. So really nice, very good view out of your camera. This is a small thing, but the first time you walk up to this unit at night and it's really dark and you can hardly see, this little light, not much to look at. When I open this door and that light comes on, you think, well, what's that gonna do? It's actually wonderful. It really shines a lot of light right here so you can see what you're doing. So just wanted to point that out. It's such a little thing, but you'll appreciate it when the time comes. Okay, so the F550, you know, I, I told you about drivability on this thing. Smooth, quiet, powerful. It's the trifecta of diesel driving right here. Please make time to come down and see me. Let's go for a spin in this thing. It is absolutely fantastic driving down the road. It handles well, it's very quiet, and lots of power. So let's experience it together. Ford's made it pretty easy to get to stuff. Our coolant recovery, our def, our uh, windshield washer fluid. This has two batteries on it. Your brake, everything's up high, easy to get to. They've moved our oil and transmission dipsticks together over here. And then the oil fill. I know most of you aren't gonna be doing your oil yourself, but it's real easy when it does need to be done for the person that's doing it. Wanted to mention, uh, you know, air cleaner. You don't want your air cleaner getting dirty, but you also don't want to go through the hassle of taking this all apart every time just to take a look at it. So what diesels have done for many years is they've put an air filter indicator on here. And I just want to educate you guys a little bit about this thing. I thought this was absolutely wonderful. Uh, first time I saw this was back in the early 90s but how it just makes such good sense so there is a little uh, line that shows up up in here and it tells you what the level of debris is on the air uh, air cleaner you reset it by pushing this button in right here and then the as soon as you start the engine that is going to come up here to the level of debris so no taking it apart so you can see what you're doing. It's very simple with this little device. It's probably a $20 part, and it's one of the greatest things ever for you to have you know, control over what your condition is of that air cleaner. So good on you, diesel guys. That's a, a nice thing to have invented there. All right, so. We're gonna go inside now. I'm gonna move all the way to the back and kind of work forward. I wanna show you some of the things that are uh, special to the SV34 floor plan right here and why so many people like it. As we come in the door, there's a control panel down here uh, that's going to give you some features like the step switch. So the step switch, what, there, what that does is stops that step from moving in and out every time you open the door. If it's not in the on position, it will move every time. So with it on like this, you don't have to hear that step actuate in and out, in and out every time you're at the campground. However, there's an override. As soon as you turn the key on to start the engine, that step's gonna draw in. So it's, it's protecting you from you know, forgetting about that. Main power disconnect when you're storing the unit. Very nice to just hit that switch and red light goes out, all the power is disabled from the inside. And then this has two large solar panels on it. I don't know the exact amount, but they kind of look like 75s to me. So that would give us 150. Perhaps they're 100s. I don't know, I'll find out for sure. Uh, I bet you I know by the end of the day but I'm sure they're at least 75, so that's a good, nice solar array up there. And then 
we can turn our lights on, we can operate our awning light outside. Um, there's a step well light for at night. So again, you're walking up to this thing, you're, you've got some lights so you can see what you're doing. Um, we can uh, extend and retract the awning from here. We can turn all the lights on and off all at once. And then this panel right here is the factory 1800 watt inverter. Just to review, that powers up the residential refrigerator inside, the auxiliary refrigerator outside, and also gives you power uh, to the outlets by the bed uh, for CPAPs. So very nice right there. If you look up high right here, this is the inverter panel that the previous owner installed. So that's the one that's the 3000 watt it can handle air conditioning up on the roof. Okay. So back here, uh, this has a king size bed, which, you know, you go down to like the 32 foot, uh, it's, you're only gonna get the queen size bed. Uh, this is really nice if you want the, what's called tilt of view. You can bring this up and watch TV straight across from you here. It's also necessary to bring this up slightly to allow a little bit more room at the foot of the bed when that 18 inch slide comes in. So very nice. I got lots of room in here now. Okay, got USB ports on both sides of the bed. I've got AC outlets on both sides of the bed. Those are powered up via the inverter. And then this is not a lift up bed with storage underneath. Instead, they gave you the storage into the drawer space down here. Fuse panel, uh, fuses and breakers are built in right there. This has nice ample closet space. Gotta admit this glossy wood looks really sharp throughout the unit. It's really, really nice. This is a 2020 with 11,299. I looked at it just as I parked it today. It's virtually perfect. I really haven't found, oh, there is one little dinger scratch on the outside over here. If, uh, uh, if you didn't see it in the video, you're just like me because I didn't notice it till just recently, but it's very minor, uh, easy to fix. Built-in dresser down below over here for the bedroom. And then really nice, this has a separate stereo system for this area back here. So those of you that maybe want to just sit back here, relax, listen to a little music, take a nap, that's very nice. You got a remote for that as well. Speaking of remote operation, um, not everybody knows this, but all of these things that handle your lights on and off and generator start and stop, these are removable. And this can just sit on the nightstand over there next to you on the bed. So Nice feature, it's not hardwired into the system. This is all Bluetoothing to the panel that I'm about to show you. All right, so let me work my way up this direction. I told you about the, uh, I told you about the residential refrigerator in here. Um, that is powered up either being plugged in at the campground, running the generator, or having the factory inverter enabled. So nice, lots of space in here, built-in ice maker, but lest you forget, we've got that outdoor refrigerator too. So very nice, bless you. All right, so moving along here, um, we do have a convection microwave combo, and we've also got gas and induction combo in the galley over here. This has a three port power supply that tucks away and gets out of your way if you're not needing that. This over here is great for pots and pans and then storage for your sink covers over here. So those can be out of your way as well. Now I can't believe it happens, but it does. There are units that have no provisions for you to do something with this. 
Well, let's set it over here for a while. Well, let's put it on the mat. No, no. Having a designated spot for that is a nice thing to have. Very deep drawers in the galley. So you don't have to, you don't have to go to that RV supply store and get that special size silverware tray. <laughs> I hate that. You can put a residential style in here. Hurry up and get one from Bed Bath & Beyond. I heard they're going out of business. All right, a little more storage over here. Uh, some people may wanna put that small trash can in this area because you've got other space for other things elsewhere. And then really nice setup. If you wanna just use these as silverware drawers, you can, or you may wanna use these as utensils or something like that. So great galley. There's a lot more room in here than it really looks like. Adjustable shelves up here. I look at that and I think, okay, I could get my little Keurig in there. You know, the, I just got one at Walmart for 20 bucks and it works great. Not a Keurig brand. All right, so we have the uh, sleeper sofa over here. Uh, that turns into a queen size bed. And then over on this side, we have a over, full, over twin, under full size bed once this table drops down. Storage wise, it's really nice that they utilize this space underneath. So you've got more storage for other things. And then this particular one does have the uh, car seat attachment back there. So if you're traveling with a small child under four years or 40 pounds, in most states you're required to have that car seat. Okay, so a lot of these come with the overhead bunk up here. This one was ordered in originally without it. They wanted the overhead entertainment up here. And I like this, especially if this is designed to be like a two person unit for you, but occasionally you wanna bring a grandkid or some guests or something, you can still do that. The thing that you lose by getting the overhead up here, the overhead entertainment, is that sliding window cover up in the front. But I think it's a good trade off. I like this very much. Uh, there's lots of storage space up here for extra stuff. I noticed earlier that these people have kept their privacy curtain and all their extra remotes up in here. Not extra remotes, just remotes. Over there is the uh, packet that comes with the unit originally with all the manuals on not only everything I've discussed, but uh, really breaking down individual stuff in the, uh, uh, you know, appliances and things like that. Speaking of appliances, this does have the continuous hot water, which is really nice. You can turn that on. So let's go back to, we're at the campground. We're hooked up to city water. And you've got, it's okay, you've got your gray valve open and you're allowing that to just drain. You don't wanna do that with the black, but you're at the campground, you plan on being there for a while. Having the continuous hot water is priceless. That is so nice because now you can take this 20 minute shower, uh, that'll heat up to 140 degrees. It's great and just let the water go, you know, really, really nice and comfortable that way. Um, I apologize. I worked my way up here and I went right by the bathroom. And the reason I <laughs> just thought that I went right by the bathroom is because that's where the switch is for the water heater. So real quick, let me just kind of show you this. Remember 18 inch slide over here. So Thor didn't want a door coming out this way because when that slide is closed right here, it can be a bit of a challenge trying to get into that door. It's not gonna open very far. So an open pocket door design is what they went with here. So it's very nice. Doesn't take up any more space in this unit. The shower is really nice. Um, that is a two piece and I've done this in other videos and I'm sure some of you would like to see this. So I'm six foot tall, still some room up here. If you're 
way taller than that, you've got even more room over here. So nice setup, plenty of room in here to do what you gotta do. This also has porcelain toilet, and there's our water heater control, the aforementioned water heater control that I was talking about. Um, of course, small little sink right here, that's okay. You want more counter space. No medicine cabinet over here. Instead, you've got all this space over here, so much more than the medicine cabinet would give you anyway. We are heated and air conditioned in the bathroom as well. All right, I think I got that pretty well. I apologize for missing that. I know a lot of you would be calling me out on that in the comments, and that's okay. I love criticism, but I also love those really good comments because I like to be as informative as possible. And some of you really appreciate that. And thank you for the positive feedback. I really do appreciate that. Okay, so stand by here for a sec. I'm gonna walk around and I'm gonna jump in the driver's seat. And I wanna point out a couple of things that you're gonna see on the dash there. Okay, so another thing the previous owner installed on this was this mobile eye up here. So this mobile eye that's really hard to see, but that has a camera facing out the front right there. Since it's an ARF, uh, ARF, since it's an aftermarket application on that thing, it's kind of limited as to what it does, but it does integrate avoidant, uh, collision avoidance and lane departure. And it does it via an audible warning for you. So it's really nice that that's in the system right now. I love the fact that Ford has put this backup camera up inside the natural place where you have been looking your whole life for your rear view. So it just makes sense. Units that have it built into the dash down here, that's fine, I get it. But you're also taking away from your navigation or your radio or something like that um, by having to switch screens every time. Now, if you don't mind spending you know, five times the price of this one, no problem. You can get one of those motorhomes with two screens over there. Well, guess what? You got two screens right now, so you don't have to spend all that extra money. Okay. My hood's ajar. I think we know about that. So I wanted to take you through this multifunction display that's up here. Uh, this is really nice. We've got in our menu, let's say I want to display things, be it the speedometer, engine uh, information, what's the transmission temp right now, how far can I go? There's our two fuel tanks. Uh, def is really important to know when you're getting low on that. And then we'll go back to, we have our trip meters that you can reset yourself. Uh, we've got your average miles per gallon on fuel economy. Uh, what the last 30 minutes, what have we done? You can reset that to different times. You can keep the compass up there for directional if you so desire. However, I do think you have it in the uh, navigation already. And if you're towing something, remember I'm gonna talk about this at the end here. If you're towing something, uh, this will give you the status of the trailer, uh, different options that you can have as far as, you know, what you're exactly pulling back there. Um, your connection checklist is good to go through depending on you're not going to be towing a fifth wheel or a gooseneck. So we're, we're going to be in conventional. So the checklist is going to remind you to look at certain things and make sure that everything is the way it's supposed to be. Okay. So really nice setup on this. We do have the six speed transmission with manual ability on this as well. It's going to be kind of hard for you to tell, but 
This thing is amazingly quiet. You can probably hear that only because that door's open over there and you, you can hear it that direction. But I just can't emphasize enough how wonderful this chassis is to drive. If you haven't driven one, please take the time to come see me. I, I just, I know you're gonna love it. I have never gotten any negative feedback on the F550 here. So something, uh, something to aspire to. All right, integrated brake controller down here, turn dial for your four wheel drive uh, uh, connectivity. And it's got a really nice dual control for climate. Um, you know, the multimedia system, it's all state of the art stuff. It's really great. So that being said, I wanna go over here to the dinette And I want to point out a couple of things about towing. Like I said, this has a 10,000 pound hitch on it right now. And like I've also said, I sold a lot of these. And there's been people in the past that, you know, I'd, I'd really like to get that magnitude, but the 10,000 isn't going to cut it. You know, I have a trailer that's 14,000 or 16,000 or, you know, some, some big number. And they just feel like they have to go to one of the bigger super C's so that they can get up to 20,000 pound tow rating. Well, that's not the case. And I'm going to show you why. So a little nuts and boltsy here, but by the way, I have all the information from Thor. Uh, I found a mistake on their brochure. Um, they claim that the gross combined weight rating is 35,000. Sorry, that's incorrect. Everything else looked good. Happy to send that to you. Here's what I found out about, this is a 19 chassis, it's a 2020 coach. So, let me back up just a sec here. So, here's the numbers that I came up with. The curb weight of this unit is 17,300 right now. The GVWR, gross vehicle weight rating, is 19.5. So the difference here is our cargo carrying capacity of 2,200. Very simple math, you know, nothing, uh, nothing too hard to understand right there. But the GCWR, that's the big number. Now, Here's how I determined, and I've, I've already known this because like I said, I've sold a lot of these, but here's how I determined that this has 40,000 pound GV, GCWR. We do know that it has the 488 gear that's listed in the uh, spec sheet for this VIN from Ford. And that gives you a GCWR of 32,000. However, Right underneath that, it's going to show you here in number four, it goes up to 40,000 GCWR when it's available with the high capacity trailer tow package. Well, here we are, high capacity trailer tow package on this unit. So mathematically speaking, this is 40,000 GCWR. Now, that being said, what is a tow rating? The tow rating for any vehicle is going to be what is the weakest link in the chain. In this case right here, it's the hitch. The hitch is a 10,000 pound hitch. So you cannot tow more than 10,000 pounds with this thing because the hitch can't handle it. However, let's talk about the chassis. And the chassis is indicative of suspension, brakes, of course, transmission, engine, uh, frame, all of those things contribute to a tow rating. And a tow rating is determined by the difference between GVWR and GCWR. Now, what I mean by that is, if you were to put 2,200 pounds of cargo in this thing, and you reached your maximum GVWR, 
you can still tow the difference, which works out to 20,500 pounds. Now, I'm not telling you, hey, run out and get a 20,000 pound trailer to tow. That's not my point here. My point is that you can now upgrade, which I've had several customers do, that 10,000 pound hitch to something more suitable for what you wanna do. So I'm not saying the sky's the limit, but I am saying 10,000 pounds is not the limit. So if you're thinking you have to spend an enormous amount of money for one of those freight liner, uh, let's say uh, uh, super seas that have up to 30,000 pound tow capacity, that's not necessarily the case. This right here looks to me like you can probably do just about anything you want. Uh, for most people, this is going to be ample. And I went out and checked the price of a 20,000 pound hitch. It's less than 400 bucks. So that's the nuts and bolts aspect. Thank you for taking the time to listen to that. I tend to be a little long winded, but I really think towing is a big deal. That's the number one reason most people go to a Super C is because they need the extra tow capacity. Good to know you can do it on this one. All right, if you come visit me, I'm gonna give you one of these collector cards right here. Um, feel free to uh, call, email, or text me anytime. I'm always available to answer questions. Um, I'll be checking comments on this here in a few hours. I'm sure I'll get those. People have some questions. I like to answer those as quickly as I can. I think I've covered it. This was a long one. Thanks for bearing with me, you guys. I appreciate you checking in today. Bill Hurtado, TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. Have a great day.